Hello everyone and welcome back to Crops of Light. In this video we're going to be overviewing Wobbot. I'm going to go ahead and break down the entirety of the bot and show you some test tasks running as well. So let's just straight into it. So to begin today's overview, I want to go ahead and talk about the functionality of the application itself. So you have the three buttons at the top, the minimize button, the maximize button, obviously the X button. The window is fully resizable, so you can go and resize it however you want. Alternatively, you can go ahead and hit full screen, which is what I'm going to be doing in the overview. So we're going to go ahead and hit the the three dots on the top left you're going to be greeted with some options you have what bot version 0.21 dot three zero i don't know why i said that pretty weirdly however that is the current version of what i'm using at the time recording this video that will change for you as you update what but then we have preferences billing capture and there's a few options in capture saying show all the solvers create new solver main solver and test and not test is a solver that i've actually created so any of your solvers would appear down here then you have the logs and then you have the deactivated one so we're going to go ahead and hit preferences here a box called what preferences will pop up and then you have the show vice tab so you can go ahead and configure the scraper throttle in seconds the scraper proxies can be enabled or disabled then you have your brute delay your rotate delay your quick task quantity and then obviously your quick task proxies which you can go ahead and configure from the proxy section so essentially your quick task proxies will use a proxy list by default Shopify scraper will be there so you can't delete that but then you can create different lists and as you guys can see I've created a list called test however I will go through and create a new list within this video so we're going to go ahead and go to proxies here and as you guys can see by default it will look like this Shopify scraper cannot delete and then I have my test scraper here that I'm going to go ahead and create but for this video I'm going to go ahead and create a new proxy set with you guys so I'm going to hit this button it's going to prompt me to put in a proxy set name we're going to call it video test hits okay and i actually have a proxy on my other screen that i'm going to go ahead and pull up so keep in mind your proxy should be in the formation ip port user and password so i'm going to go ahead and put it in it's blurred out for this video but it's in there then all you guys want to do there's no save button at all so if, even if you go back to the previous tab and you go back to proxies tab and you go back to the actual list as you guys can see i blurred it out once again but the proxy is still there so i'm going to go ahead and hit this button but before i do that if i ever want to delete a set i can go ahead and hit this button and really delete that proxy set from any of the drop downs and also i can maximize this and minimize this and this but uh, this box is not sizable at all so those are all your options we're going to go ahead and close it down we're going to go back to the three dots and go to the billing and this is where we create our billing profiles within what bot obviously you can full screen it as well i already have a test profile but i'm going to go ahead and break down the profile creation process so when you hit this i'm going to go ahead and bring it full screen here we have our profile name our quick task email our quick task password then our shipping info section first name last name email address address to phone city state zip code country card number name on cards and obviously your month year and cvv and you can actually have a separate billing so at the moment because this option isn't ticked your billing and shipping will be exactly the same but if you want to go ahead and make it different then you hit this box and obviously billing pops up down here and shipping however for the purpose of this overview i'm going to make my billing and shipping the exact same so as you guys can see my billing profile has been filled out i've gone ahead and configured my profile name at the top called video test so please keep that in mind when we go further with the overview i'm going to go ahead and click save here that's going to save it and then all my billing profiles that is available pops up here so if you go ahead and come out of full screen here just some indications to go ahead and separate your profile so obviously the most obvious one is the profile name so obviously this is called video test and then what it goes ahead and does it gets the first letter of your first name puts it there with a dot and it obviously puts your last name there so obviously john doe and then it gets the four numbers of your card number in there so you can go ahead and differentiate it if you have your same name if you're running multiple cards on your name then that is an easy way to go ahead and differentiate your billing profiles i'm going to go ahead and x out of that and go back to the free dot and now we're going to move on to capture so obviously there's a few options here i'm going to go ahead and leave show all solvers for now i'm going to focus on create new solver here so you can go ahead and configure your solver name so i'm going to go ahead and call it video test that is the common theme within this overview and then this is what the solver looks like 
then within your solver whilst you're using it it will tell you how many captures you've got ahead and completed based on the capture requests from your tasks so obviously this number will take up as you solve them then your average solve is basically the speed calculated on average of how long it takes you to solve whether that's you manually solving it or there's one clicks involved then at the bottom you can go ahead and put a proxy in here so as you guys can see this is typable and then you can hit the button set and that will go ahead and set the proxy for this capture harvester and then you have auto solve so if you want to turn that off you can obviously when it goes white that indicates which options on and off but at the moment it is on then we want to go ahead and hit the settings button and essentially this is to launch youtube to log in so you launch youtube to go ahead and log in as you guys can see it's there i can go ahead and log in here hit it again i can launch google that takes me to google if i want to wait, I launch waiting it takes me back to waiting for capture requests and then i have the reset account then i have the reload page so let's say if i was on google and I wanted to go ahead and reload the page, then it reloads the page. Then I can go ahead and delete the solver if I wish. I've already gone ahead and logged into a solver, so I'm going to go ahead and not log into this one. If I go to my capture uh, section once again, so we've gone over how to create a new solver, then obviously the main solver's been the bot, then you have the test and video test. Test was there before, if you guys remember, obviously video test is the one I just created. If I hit control on four, which is a shortcut for this, or I can hit show all solvers, it pops up every solver, and as you guys can see, video test and test has gone ahead and popped up for me to go ahead and log into or use in association with my tasks. So we've gone ahead and broke down capture and I'm moving to the log section. If I hit this, a file directory goes ahead and pops up and as you guys can see, my log system tasks are here so I can go ahead and open them up and go ahead and use them. The type of document will be a text document so please keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and X out of that, go back to the three dots and obviously I can go ahead and deactivate my bot if I wish. Now let's go ahead and move into the task section of this overview. As you guys can see on the screen, I have no task groups and obviously it's asking me to create a task group so I can show up my tasks here and my scrapers are zero out of zero. So we're gonna hit the addition button and there we go, it says add group. You have your group name, so you can go ahead and configure this. I'm going to call it video test. Then you have your sites. Obviously you can go ahead and scroll through with this little scroll bar here. Alternatively, you can actually go ahead and type in the site and it goes ahead and goes to that part of this, uh, the list. So if I was gonna go for Bodega, obviously it'll go to Bodega. I typed in BOD and it went there. If I wanted KIF, obviously it'll go to GIF, but I wanna go ahead and focus on Bodega. And you might be thinking, why do I want to focus on Bodega? It's because I've gone ahead and taken out an item for this overview that I'm going to focus on. It's a Cloud Terry shoes. Obviously the link is here, so I'm going to copy this link and minimize this. So the site is Bodega. Then you have your scrapers. There is guides within Whatbot Slack. There is a good idea to go ahead and jump into them and learn what scrapers work best for certain sites. But obviously these are your options when it comes to Bodega. That you can add your own custom scraper if you wish, but that is up to you. So for the scrapers, how it actually works, if you hit on the zero, regardless of what the scraper actually is, it goes from zero to 10. You can add as many as you want. Obviously, once again, to the right area, it is worth looking into the guides and seeing how it works properly. So once you go ahead and create the list, it'll say the site dash then the actual uh, task username that you're going ahead and given for it. Then to break down the task configuration section, you haven't actually created any tasks yet. So you have your keywords, the early link. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in there. You have negative keywords if you wish to do that. Then obviously you have your restock mode here, so you have brute, rotate, or none. I'm going to go ahead and leave that as it is. And you have your start date if you wish to put a start date then you can go ahead and do that. So if you go ahead and put a start date there and you put the time on that start date, then that can work well. And obviously head start works in association with this. So essentially what a head start does is let's say if I put the time for 12 o'clock tomorrow and I leave my bot on, obviously my bot has to be active for this to work. And I put the head start for four minutes. That means four minutes before the time on the um, this section. So obviously if it was 12 o'clock, it'd be 11.56. My tasks will go ahead and preload on that site. Then I have the minimum price and maximum price. This is to avoid checking out random items that maybe the keywords are switched up, which are purposely done by the developers of these websites. If you try counter out box, so obviously that is there if you want to go ahead and use it. Then you have your task proxies, you have your Shopify scraper, which we talked about, you can't delete them. You have the video test, which is the proxy list we made in this video and test that was there before. Then if you hit the advanced button, more options pop up. So for boost, you can put in your shipping rate or in stock variant if you wish. Then you have your random range. So this is like your size range. You can go ahead and put your stuff in there. And the numbers are like so. So if I wanted to go for 5.5 and a six, I'll do 5.5 comma 6.0. And that will go ahead and go for a 
5.5 out of 6. Then we have our early variants, fast recommended in the formation of size and variants. You can go ahead and put them in there as well. And then for miscellaneous, you have one checkout per profile and use capture. So obviously, you can go ahead and configure this. Now, within Wattbot, essentially how this works is, so let's say I was going to go ahead and create this task. If I hit this once, all those specifications are for that task. So if I wanted to go ahead and create another task and basically switch this from one checkout per profile off and I create another task and that second task is in association with the new settings that I've just created. And before we go ahead and break down the task section, the cogs button at the top is simply to edit your groups. You can go ahead and change the scrapers if you wish, which is something we've recapped. Now we're going to go ahead and break down the task here. As you guys can see from the size is random. That is a random range we've put in. And then our billing is completely configurable by us. So we have our test profile, which is within what bot. Then we have the billing profile that we created within this OV, which was a video test. Then we got our site email, which is optional. The password for that email, which is optional. And then we have the flow of the task and the status. There's a second task here that I'm going to go ahead and delete. And how you do that is by right clicking it and you can disable or delete the task. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And then we only have one task here. And obviously the size Size is seven. If we check the site, size seven is in stock and available to be purchased in the color black. So we're going to go ahead and minimize this and actually run the task. But keep in mind with Flow, you have a few options here. If you do link, it sends a link somewhere. And obviously, I'm going to stick to base for this video. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually start the task here. So I'm going to hit start. It's going to go ahead and start it. I can stop it if I wish, like I just did. Status is stopped. And when I start it, it goes ahead and picks up the product's image here. Getting shipping rate, submitting shipping rate, calculating taxes. And it goes ahead and pops up my capture. Obviously, I have a bad score. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this very, very quickly. And as you guys can see, submitting purchase, and then it's just going to go ahead and loop, pops up my other capture harvester. And as you guys can see, as I mentioned before, it's completed one. The average solve time is 6.28 seconds based on my speed of solving that capture. So that concludes the overview for Wobot Cop Supply.